Welcome back to the Quality Improvement Training Series. This is the series on root cause analysis techniques, helping identify causes and solutions. I'm Mary Beth Cox, and I will be your facilitator and guide through this series. In the previous video, we explored how to prepare to do a root cause analysis. In this video, we will be talking about the root cause analysis techniques of brainstorming, affinity diagrams, and cause and effect diagrams, also known as fishbone diagrams. Let's begin by talking about brainstorming. Brainstorming is a strategy that uses critical thinking and creativity to get people to share lots of ideas. Your team or a group familiar with the problem would conduct a brainstorming session. You would do this during your root cause analysis to fully understand all of the possible causes of the problem you have identified. You could also use it during the solution stage to, again, identify a number of solutions to your problem. When you're using it for root cause analysis, you would use it at the beginning of your process. You can also use it in tandem with other root cause analysis strategies, and we will be talking about that later in this presentation. During brainstorming for root cause analysis purposes, you need to remember to avoid jumping to solutions. You are at the stage of identifying causes and not solutions, but people it's just human nature will want to identify solutions. So if people do identify solutions during brainstorming, just put them in a parking lot and you can revisit them when you are at the solution stage. Let's talk about how to brainstorm. Here are some helpful pointers to get you started. Encourage a wide variety of ideas from your group. Ask people to say and instead of but. Avoid criticizing people's ideas and encourage building on each other's ideas. One thing you may want to consider though, if you're doing brainstorming to identify root causes, you want to encourage creativity when brainstorming, but also you want to make sure that the causes people are identifying are real causes. You may want to consider setting a time limit and giving people some time to write down their ideas first. Some people may not be comfortable just jumping right in to seeing their ideas out loud, and they may want some preparation time. You also want to think about if you want to have preset categories or not. You can do it both ways. You will probably want to organize your ideas, though, after people have shared them. So if you don't have preset categories, an affinity diagram will be a good way to organize your ideas. And if you do want to have preset categories, then you should probably think about using a cause and effect diagram or a fishbone diagram. You will want to share the problem statement with the group and then ask them to start brainstorming. Some questions to ask are listed here such as, what is causing this? Why is this happening? What are the reasons for this? What else can you think of? You'll probably be surprised at all the ideas that your group comes up with. Let's look at a few examples. This first example is around the problem that most nights my kids forget to brush their teeth. Say that I asked my family to brainstorm some causes of this problem. And you can see all of the results that I got with my brainstorming um, session. For example, my kids forget things they don't like to do. They don't wanna get out of bed after they're in the bed if they've forgotten. They don't think it's important. They fight when they're using the sink at the same time. The toothpaste tastes bad. I forget to remind them, my husband forgets to remind them, etc. So we came up with a lot of ideas.
Let's look at another example that might be more related to the work you do every day. Here's our problem statement. Falls are the leading cause of emergency room visits and unplanned hospitalizations for people on a DD waiver. What causes falls that lead to ER visits and unplanned hospitalizations? Say that I had a brainstorming session with my team and you can see all of the ideas they came up with. There are many possible causes of falls, such as slippery floors, not having handrails, people missing a step, a rug, somebody rushing or being in a hurry, clothing that didn't fit right, being dizzy, the risk awareness tool had not been done or it was outdated, poor lighting, etc. Brainstorming, however, is not the end of your root cause analysis. It is really only the beginning. Now let's talk about ways to organize the ideas that come about as a result of brainstorming. The first one we're going to talk about is an affinity diagram. This is a diagram that you will use to organize brainstormed ideas into categories based on similar traits. You would use it after you brainstorm and you would use it when having ideas put into categories would help you decide what to do next. So you would take your brainstormed ideas and sort them into categories that make sense to you. So this is something um, you can do with your team, start sorting them based on similar characteristics and see if the categories that you come up with make sense to your group um, or make sense in relation to the problem that you're trying to solve. Um, as you are doing this, you will want to identify similar or like ideas that you could possibly combine or eliminate any ideas where there were duplicates. Uh, the benefit of this process is that it would help you organize your information into categories um, which would then help you make sense of all of your brainstormed ideas. And a potential challenge would be that you could have blind spots in certain categories if nobody um, kind of brainstorms a cause for a certain category. Um, for example, if um, the problem is that fewer than 30% of individuals have employment outcomes, but during brainstorming, nobody ever mentions anything about a certain process that's really important to um, having employment outcomes. It won't get identified as a category in your affinity, affinity diagram. So it would be basically a blind spot because it didn't come up as a brainstormed um, idea and therefore it didn't have a category. Let's look at an example um, for the problem that most nights my kids forget to brush their teeth. So I've taken all the ideas that we had brainstormed and I've put them into categories that made sense to me. For example, um, the, the brainstormed ideas that my kids forget to do things they don't like to do, I forget to remind them, and my husband is supposed to help remind them, but he forgets too. I've grouped those under the category of forgetting. One thing that you want to make sure to keep in mind throughout your root cause analysis process is to avoid placing blame on individuals. Because usually when it comes to improving problems or processes, it's less about individuals making mistakes and more about the environment and the process that is the problem or could be improved. Um, so one way that I've shown that in this affinity diagram is instead of grouping that my kids hate brushing their teeth, they fight and the toothpaste tastes bad under the heading that my kids have bad attitudes, I have um, instead decided that it's more about that the process is not fun not so much about their attitudes, but it's about the process not being fun. So that's an example of kind of changing the perspective so that it's not blaming the individuals. So in this diagram, 
can it help you identify any root causes yet? And does it help you identify any possible solutions or changes that you can test? Perhaps you said that maybe it not being fun and forgetting are key areas that are root causes because they have the most um, kind of causes underneath them in those categories. In this example, we're looking at our problem where falls are the leading cause of emergency room visits and unplanned hospitalizations for people on a DD waiver. We've taken all of our brainstormed causes and put them into five categories here. Environment, individuals' lack of awareness, individuals' medical or health concerns, staffing issues, and risk assessment. So take a look at these and think, how are we doing with avoiding placing blame on individuals? Also, does putting the brainstormed ideas into categories like this help you identify the root causes at this point? Can it help you identify any solutions or changes? Now let's talk about creating a cause and effect diagram, also known as a fishbone diagram. This is also related to brainstorming because it is essentially brainstorming within categories. This is a tool that helps teams explore and display visually the many causes contributing to a certain effect or outcome. It displays everything graphically the relationship of the causes to the effect and to each other, and can help you identify areas for improvement. You would use it at the beginning of your root cause analysis process. This could be your brainstorming exercise. The benefit of this process is it ensures that you identify possible causes within each category. And also it has visual appeal in that it looks like a fishbone. Some potential challenges are that it may become overwhelming if you have many causes and then those causes have many causes. It can get quite detailed with bones upon bones. So basically the way it works is it looks like a fish and you start by putting your problem that you're trying to solve at the head of the fish and then putting your cause categories at the end of each of the long bones. And then within each of those, you then ask your team to brainstorm the possible causes within that category. So the Institute for Healthcare Improvement in their um, quality Improvement Toolkit um, already suggests that you use the categories of materials, methods, equipment, environment, and people. There are other categories you can consider. Some of them include staffing, individuals, families, policies and procedures, resources, training and tools. So these are the categories that you would put at the end of the bones and then um, get your team to brainstorm within those categories. The IHI toolkit has a fishbone diagram template that you can use um, to fill in the categories and then the ideas within each category. And that is what is displayed here as an example of using that template. This is for the fall prevention team for their project, Preventing Falls for All. They've used the categories of individual, environment, tools and training, policies and procedures, and equipment. So when you look at the way that this fishbone diagram has been created, does it help you identify root causes 
and can it help you identify possible solutions and changes that you could make? The resources listed on this slide are where you can go to learn more about the topics presented in this video. Both IHI and ASQ have very helpful templates for doing the fishbone, template, fishbone diagram and many other quality improvement tools. In this series so far, we've talked about how to prepare to do a root cause analysis, how to use brainstorming, and then how to categorize our ideas from brainstorming into helpful diagrams. I hope you will stay tuned for the rest of the series to learn more about root cause analysis techniques.